How do you know the emergency heat is working? How do you know the emergency heat is hooked up? Today, we're gonna to be talking about emergency heat. I'm gonna show you what emergency heat is, talk about what you can do to check and see if the actual emergency heat is working and know. I'm gonna show you the tools that I'm gonna be using. Today, you're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, let's get started. This is called a package heat pump. It's all outside. There are package heat pumps and there are split heat pumps. You may have a split heat pump. That means part of it's outside and part of it's inside. And your emergency heat, if you have a split unit, is on the inside of the house, maybe in the basement or the attic. Since this is a package unit, our heater kit or electric heat strips, otherwise known as emergency heat, is right here. So that's what emergency heat looks like. I'm gonna show you two ways to check and make sure it's working. Let's go inside because it's cold, 15 degrees. Woo! To avoid damaging your heat pump equipment, especially the fan blades, make sure that when you have snowy conditions, you set your thermostat for emergency heat. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So this is the thermostat. It's set for 75, it's 69 in here, and it says emergency heat. And it's set for emergency heat, right? So not just regular heat, because that's your heat pump, but emergency heat. Now we need to make sure it's actually hooked up. So we're gonna take the thermostat off the wall, and then we're gonna look at the terminals that say W2, which is auxiliary heat, and then this one is labeled E. Can't really see it, it's hard to see it, but that's E. So that means it is hooked up, it's a brown, oh no, you can see it right there. So it's a brown wire that controls the emergency heat a white wire that controls the auxiliary heat, aux, A-U-X. The aux terminal is energized whenever you're in the regular heat mode, and that is to supplement your heat pump to heat your home. Whenever it's an emergency heat, this thermostat will engage the E terminal, which is just gonna turn your heat strips on, the G terminal, which is gonna turn your fan on, and that's how you have emergency heat. So now that we know it's hooked up in the thermostat, we need to make sure it's actually hooked up in the unit. So we're gonna turn it back on emergency heat, make sure it comes on, and then I'm gonna show you the first tool that you can use to make sure the emergency heat is actually working. You can see EM heat on is flashing on and off. Once it stops flashing and it's constant, that means it's engaged. This right here is my field piece dual induct psychrometer and this is what I'm going to use to measure the temperature of the air. So I'm just gonna put this right here in the supply vent where the air blows out. And once it kicks on, we're gonna make sure that this temperature is at least 20 degrees warmer than the thermostat. It should be more than that. So if it's 69, it should be blowing at least, I would say 90, at least. So we're gonna leave this in here. Fan's not blowing yet. We're gonna check out that temperature. Emergency heat is on now. So you can see it's no longer flashing. All right, let's go check the temperature coming out of the vent. All right, it is 56 degrees coming out of the supply vent. It's definitely not working. We've given it enough time to engage. You wait, you know, a couple minutes, wait five minutes to make sure the heater kit has time to engage, but it's not working. Now, I'm gonna show you another tool you can use to check it. Now I'm gonna show you another way to verify if the heater kit is actually working. We've got our power going into the heater kit and we've got two yellow wires going in, two blue wires going out. And we can use our amp clamp to measure the amperage, right? Because each heater, if this is 10 kW, each heater should be pulling somewhere around 20 amps, right? So we're gonna hit the select button, turn it on AAC, and we are gonna take and put our clamp around each wire. There's the blue wire. All right, that's that blue wire, and we've got nothing, zero. And then we're gonna do the other wire. Let me see if I can get it on there. All right, zero. So we got no amp draw, right? Our heaters can't be working. So let's check out the wiring. Here's our white wire that goes to another white wire that goes to a plug. See that? And there's a brown wire, right? In that plug, white and brown. The brown went to our emergency heat. The white goes to auxiliary. 
So this brown wire should be going to one of these relays down here. Okay, and I don't see a brown wire. I see a white wire energizing that relay and I see another white wire energizing that relay. And I bet you, if I look at this plug right here, you see the white wire that goes in and the brown wire? The white wire comes out, but the brown wire doesn't. So the brown wire is not being used. So what do I need to do? I just need to take this brown wire and I can actually just put this under the same terminal as the white and that should engage my heat strips. I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, so I got the white and the brown connected. So now whenever it engages auxiliary, it'll en engage that white wire. Whenever it turns on the emergency heat, it'll engage that white wire. And now I should be able to take, put this on AAC, hit the select button. We're gonna measure this blue wire first. Nothing. Perfect. This one. Nothing. Interesting. I took out the heater kit. I'm going to show you what it looks like because I found the problem. I did verify that I had 240 volts going to the package heat pump and to the heater kit. And I don't run into this very often, but look. Look at this. Wires are broken off. Look at that. Wire broken off in the exact same spots and that will cause the heater kit to not work the heat strips to not glow because they're not getting power through them so i need to get a new heater kit what's the model number 6hk0650106 i'm gonna go to the shop and get a heater kit headed to the shop to get a heater kit i think i've got one in stock because we had a change out we were going to do pretty soon one thing I like about the snow, man, it is pretty. But, it's not fun to work in. I'm going to be able to fix it today. I'm very happy. I've got a brand new heater kit. See, no broken wires. No broken wires. And you can see it's brand new. No rust. Not like the old one with those broken wires, with that rust broken wires and I ended up replacing the relays with a contactor because I didn't see the broken wires and I thought how is this not working the relays were closing so I thought you know what I'm going to replace it with a contactor if you want to learn more about relays contactors transformers I'll put a video down below for you back on site new heater kit going in it's got four screws so really easy to install though. See? And you just put the four screws in. Two on top, two on bottom. And then wire it up. Alright, we're ready. I got the panel off the supply side of the package heat pump so you can see the heater kit. There's the heater kit right there. Right in front of the blower wheel. And there's the supply duct. So... Let's go back around here. Meter on volts AC. Take my meter leads and just verify, hey, we got 249 volts. So there's plenty of voltage. Everything's wired up. We got a new heater kit. We'll wait until the thermostat calls for emergency heat. And then I'll show you them glowing and then I'll show you the supplier temperature. Motor just kicked on. I can feel the heat. You can see some discoloration in the coils of wire. I'm going to turn my meter to AAC, hit the select button, and we're measuring the main power, one side of the main power that comes into this unit, 42 amps. That means our heaters are working. So both heaters are working. But we're gonna measure individually. We'll go around this wire first. Should have about 20 amps there. And then we'll go around the, it's hard to see, the next wire. 
20 amps well 21 so 10 kW 40 amps it's working I'm gonna put the panel back on and we'll measure the supplier temperature inside the house supplier temperature is now 86.6 so we've got a 20 degree split between the return and supply temp and it's working as it should a few tips for you make sure you have the right thermostat some thermostats are heat pump thermostats but they're heat pump without auxiliary heat without emergency heat so they may have the terminal e or aux but those thermostats will not work for emergency heat they'll only work for the heat pump part so make sure you look in the manual and you determine whether or not it is a heat pump thermostat that will work with emergency heat also make sure that you have a thermostat that is programmed correctly some thermostats don't need programming but some of them do and I've had jobs where the installers installed a thermostat and they didn't program it for a heat pump it was programmed for gas so make sure you go in there you know how to program the thermostat it's very simple and you can probably download a manual for any type of thermostat all you have to do is take it off the wall turn it around and look at the model number then type in the model number and put installation manual after that customers emergency heat is working now I hope you know that emergency heat auxiliary heat heat strips that's all the same thing and I hope you know what tools to use and how to check and make sure that your emergency heat is working I told the customer use emergency heat until the snowy conditions are gone it's gonna snow tomorrow so that means they need to keep the thermostat on emergency heat that way we don't get snow or ice build up outside on the outside fan let me show you this right here is the outside fan and whenever you get snow accumulation on this fan sometimes it can build up ice and then when it turns on it will end up uh, getting stuck burning the motor up the blade will or the blade will uh, break and I've had that happen on several occasions so it is best to use the emergency heat which, just, which is just the fan and the heat strips during snowy conditions anytime it's below 20 degrees you might as well use your emergency heat if you have this type of heat pump this is a conventional heat pump traditional heat pump if you've got a mini split then it's totally different it doesn't usually mini splits don't have backup heat and uh, mini splits have inverter compressors so they can heat the home even when it's 20 degrees even when it's 10 degrees I think that Samsung works down to negative 14 before losing efficiency and not being able to heat a home. So if you have this type of heat pump, use your emergency heat whenever you have snowy conditions, whenever it's below 30 degrees or it's snowing, use emergency heat. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, ask your question in the comments because questions can lead to new content. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. If you're a homeowner and you want more tips, you want more videos, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Homeowners. If you're a technician and you want more tips for being a technician, I've got a playlist called HVAC Tips for technicians. I've got hundreds of videos, live experience in the field as a technician to help you be a better technician. If you want to take your training to another level, I've got a bunch of videos on my playlist called HVAC Training Courses. I've got videos on mini split sizing, HVAC equipment sizing, duct sizing, how to do duct work, sales training, geothermal training, how to get more customers for your business, um, information about running an HVAC company. So if you want to take your training to the next level, I encourage you to go check out that playlist. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.